now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again. I wake again. I pray the Lord that I. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again. I wake again. I pray the Lord that I wake. The first thing is in which frame rate should you film? In the world, there are two standards: American and European. The difference is in the electricity. In Europe, the electricity is 50 Hz and in the USA, the electricity is 60 Hz. In the video world, you also have two standards, PAL and NTSC. Those standards affect the frame rates in which the camera can record. The FPS or the frames per second is the amount of pictures the camera is capturing for a single second. To have a smooth video, the minimum is 24 images per second. In the USA, you can record in 24, 30, 60, and 120 FPS. In Europe, the standard is 25, 50 and 100. So if you fly between USA and Europe, don't forget to change the settings in your camera. If you don't do so, the lights in your videos will flicker. Now let's check the most cinematic frame rates. Everyone in the cinema industry is saying that the 24 frames per second produces the most cinematic videos. The news and the TV shows are recorded in 30 frames per second. For me, as a person who creates videos for social media, I don't see difference between 24, 25 and 30. So I follow that rule. For speaking videos like that one, I will record in 25 frames per second, if I am in the USA 24 or 30. For my travel videos, I will use 60 frames per second, like that I can slow down the footage two times and it looks more dreamy. Baby, it's a big dark world. You don't need to know about that. Don't need to know about that. I'll protect you with my lights. You don't need to know. And the slow motion is reserved for epic moments. The slow motion clips are big in size and most of the time the quality is a bit worse. So that is why you don't film everything in slow mo, only the epic stuff and the bureau clips. After we understand better the frame rate, it's time to fix the next thing. To achieve cinematic image, we need to be careful with the motion blur. Our eyes naturally see fast moving subjects blurry. If your videos don't have motion blur, they will look robotic. There is one very simple rule called the 180 degree rule. Your shutter speed should be double your frame rate. So if you film in 30 frames per second, your shutter should be 1 60th of a second. If you film in 120 frames per second, your shutter should be 240th of a second. In that way, you make sure that you have a nice motion blur in your clips. I try to follow that rule as much as I can. But when I run and gun, sometimes it's better to capture the moment than to worry about the motion blur. Now let's speak about the exposure. When you follow the rule, your shutter speed is a constant. You change it only if you change the frame rate. That leaves us with only two parameters to control the exposure, aperture and ISO. But in reality, you have only the ISO. The aperture controls the iris in your lens and has two functions as well. It controls how much light the lens lets to the sensor and controls the blurriness of the background, which we call bokeh. If you want your videos to be nice and creamy, you have to film with wide open aperture. That lets a lot of light to the sensor and your image will be overexposed. To fight with that issue, we have to introduce one more tool in our kit, the ND filter. The ND filter is a very high quality dark glass that reduces the light which reaches the sensor. It works like sunglasses. There are three types of ND filters, variable ND, hard ND and hard ND filter plus CPL filter in one. The variable NDs are one of the most popular ones because you can adjust how much light to be cut off. Unfortunately, that comfort comes with a downside. Overable ND filters have cross polarization. The cross polarization looks like a dark vignette going through your image and it's impossible to get rid of it on post production. That is why I move away from the variable NDs. The second option is the hard ND filters. With them, you cannot control dynamically how much light to cut or let. The filter is a constant. If the light conditions change, you have to change the filter. Example, if you cut four stops of light and your exposure is perfect, but later the sun becomes brighter, you have to change the filter with stronger one. The advantage is that you don't get polarization, but you lose comfort of having only one filter and you have to screw and unscrew them all the time. Last year, a Chinese company, Freewell, came out with an amazing product. 
magnetic ND filters. I'm using them already for a year and they are very comfortable. I bought two filters and they satisfy fully my video needs. ND16 and ND64. That is equal to 4 stops and 6 stops. I ordered the NDPL. That filter combines ND and CPL filter in one. The CPL removes the reflection light from the surface. It makes the sky more deep color and water looks better. There is a lot of light which is reflected from the wood and from the cup. Now check what the CPO filter will do with all the reflection. I'll just rotate the filter a little bit and it will cut all the reflection. That's the magic of the CPO filter. And that's the advantage of the CPO filter and the ND filter in one. After we know how to create a cinematic image, it's time to check the composition. I follow three simple rules. The first one is the rule of thirds. Activate the grid on your camera screen and position the most important thing on the lines. Second, when I don't use the row of thirds, I place my subject in the center, in the middle of the frame. Like that, I make my subject the focal point of the video. The third thing I try to pay attention is the leading lines. Pay attention for those three things and your composition will improve dramatically. Now let's talk about camera angles. Most beginners and tourists film from their eye level and chest level. To stand out from the crowd, find other angles. I like to record belly level or even very close to the ground. When you record close to the ground, you make your subject appear more heroic. The talent looks in control of the situation. The opposite is recording from above. You make your subject look insignificant. That makes your subject look vulnerable and out of control. That is why when I do a photo shoot, I'm very careful filming women from above because it makes them look vulnerable. But when you do a drone shot filming from above, it looks cool because you show how majestic is the nature and how small we are compared to it. My favorite angle is to film low, belly level or close to the ground. To achieve those angles, the most comfortable is to use a gimbal or a cheaper option is to buy a camera handle. You can use your tripod and flip the camera, but I rarely do it because the first two are more comfortable. Filming near the ground has one more advantage. You introduce a lot of foreground and because the foreground is so close to the camera, it moves very very fast, especially when you film with wide angle lens. That makes car scenes look so much faster. Hollywood uses that trick a lot. Just pay attention next time when you watch an action movie. After we check the composition and the angles, let's move to the different types of shots. The most common shot to open a scene is the establishing shot. It is typically wide enough to establish the geography, the time of the day and it's often used to transition between scenes. The next shot is the wide shot. It is very similar to the establishing shot, but here the focus is on the subject rather than the environment. It is about the visual relationship of the subject to the environment. Next we have the full shot. We have the subject in full size in the frame. Moving to the medium shot, it shows the subject from the knees up. And now we came to the cowboy shot. 
it comes from the westerns, it frames the subject from where the guns used to be. After that we have the close-up shots, it's perfect for revealing emotions. Moving further is the extreme close-up. It emphasizes small area of details of the subject. It is time to speak about variety. Your videos to look good and rich, they have to have variety of shots. You need to have an establishing shot to show where your subject is. You need to have medium shots and close-up shots. But variety doesn't finish there. You need to have as well variety of the camera angles. For example, when you do a tracking shot, you can record it from three angles, from behind, from a side and in front. The variety of shots is what will make your videos richer and more interesting. Now let's check how to hold our cameras to get the most stable footage. I'll show you two ways how to hold the camera to get the most stable footage. The first one, one hand under, the other one on top, holding like that. Your hands should be close to the body, walk the elbows, bend the knees, and then we do ninja walk. That will give you the most stable footage holding the camera handheld, because otherwise it's wobbling all around. The second way, get a strap. In the moment you stretch the strap, you get one more point of stability and that makes your video more stable. So all the panning movements will be more stable than if you just handheld. There is one more thing you have to take care as a videographer. That is the light. The best time of the day to film is the golden hour. That happens two times a day, on sunrise and on sunset. It is the most magical light that will boost your production quality. Third, recording the shadows, there the light is very nice. If you want to get fancier and start controlling the light, get a reflector. It is very cheap and you can use it in two ways. You can bounce light back to your subject or you can use it as a diffuser. Let's check now the different camera movements that we should know. First is the tracking shot, behind the subject and in front of the subject. Second, we have the crop shot where we track the subject from a side. Three, we have pull and push. Those are very similar to the tracking shots, but here the camera is moving but the subject is staying on one place. Fourth, we have the orbit shot. To achieve a nice orbit you need to use gimbal, otherwise the movement will be jerky. That is why we have the banana orbit, we just do part of the orbit, it is perfect when you don't have a gimbal. Let's move to the sound design and I can honestly tell you that this is the most neglected part by the most content creators. Sound design is not just adding some music over your clips. First, you have to find a nice song which will fit the videos you filmed. After that, you have to cut the clips on the music beat. Then add additional sounds, the door opening, the sound of the forest, the waves hitting the coast. 50% of the surrounding information we get through our eyes and the other 50% with our ears. When you create a video with nice rich environment, you help the viewer consume your video better. So spend more time and add additional sound that will improve your production quality.
I really hope that the video was helpful. You can express your love hitting the like button, subscribe and see you in the next episode.